So starting any new software can be incredibly overwhelming. Most of the buttons inside of ZBrush in particular, buttons, drop down, sub palettes, we just won't even touch. And as a professional user, you won't even touch it either. You know what? And that's okay. So my goal is to get you up to speed in ZBrush 2024 as quickly and efficiently as possible. And remember, there are many ways to do the very same thing inside of ZBrush but this is how I do it. So step one, you've downloaded and installed ZBrush 2024. You load it up and we see this home page. What I want you to do is hit the gear and then never show this except when there's an update. So we're just gonna get that out of the way then you can press close. You can click Lightbox currently, but this is typically what happens to newcomers. They left click and drag and this happens like, yay, something's on the screen. This is 2.5D and that is kind of the foundation of ZBrush, but we don't need it. We don't need to touch any of the 2.5D tool. So if that happens, you're going to go top left corner to document, new document. And then no, you do not wish to save your changes. We're back in business. I prefer this method. Go to Lightbox, use a Dynamesh. You'll find it here. It is the sphere thing and it says Dynamesh. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to click this one. So I double click. So we have something in 3D. We can start sculpting. If you left click and drag on this mesh, you can see that something happens, right? I'm actually sculpting, which is awesome. If I left click and drag outside of my mesh, I can rotate around my canvas. To zoom, we can hold control and then right click and drag to zoom in and out. We can hold alt and left click and drag outside of our mesh to pan. But all that being said, you really need some sort of drawing tablet. It doesn't matter what kind. So this tablet is literally a 11 or 12 year old Wacom tablet. It's dirty, it's filthy, but it works great. From this point forward, anytime I say left click, I mean I'm pressing the tip of this stylus to the drawing tablet itself. I have also mapped this bottom button to right click. But if I am just hovering over my tablet, I can press that little button and rotate around. I can press that button because it's it's right click and pan with alt. I can press that button and with control, I can zoom in and out. So there's a thousand ways to do it. That is how I go about doing it. You'll get used to it. I promise. Undo. So Control Z, we can undo. Control Shift Z, we'll redo. At the top of our screen, we have our undo history that we can drag forward and backwards. Let's say your sphere is way over here and you can't really get to it. There's a button called frame. We can click this or we can just press F on our keyboard. So once again, we can press F. Boom. We have framed that object into our camera view and we are good to go. Okay, so top left corner of our screen, we have brushes. You can press B as in Bravo and you will be overwhelmed by how many brushes there are. But every single brush corresponds to a another letter on the keyboard. So like, for example, everything that starts with T, I can press T and then it has filtered all of these brushes that start with T and then I can even like click S O R. For example, if I were to press S at this point, I have the thick skin clay brush. There are a set number of brushes that you will use. You will never use all of these. Let's take a look at clay. So I'm going to press B as in Bravo, pulls up my brush menu, or I can click the brush menu here. And then I can press C to filter because this brush is called clay buildup. And it is right there, clay buildup. So quickly, if I wanted to hop into my clay buildup brush, I could press B, C, and then B is located right here. Now, this is pressure based if you're using a tablet. So let me undo, get that sphere out of the way. If I can gently come in here and sculpt, I can press more firmly and it is going to be far more intense. Holding Alt will allow me to carve into my mesh. This typically works with almost every single brush. By default, it's pulling out. Hold Alt, it's carving in. Next up, we have Shift. Holding Shift with any brush selected, We'll switch over to my smooth brush and I can smooth out these forms. This isn't erasing. This is just smoothing that out. And if I were to go super far, you can see it just destroys everything that I've created. Next up, we'll touch briefly is control. We're going to hold control. Left click and drag on our mesh. And this is a mask. What that means is I cannot sculpt in that area. It's preventing anything from happening to that masked portion. To clear my mask, I'm going to hold control. And then outside of my mesh, I'm going to left click and drag to make a little box and then let go. That has cleared my mask. If I do the same thing, hold control, left click and drag outside my mesh, I can mask with this box and then left click and drag, make a little box outside of my, outside of my mesh. We cleared that. We are good to go. If I have a mask and would like to invert it, control click outside of my mesh, it has inverted the mask. Up here, we have focal shift. You don't really need that currently as a newbie. You have draw size. We can change our brush to be smaller or larger. Never come up here. Just tap S on your keyboard. That little bar will be immediately teleported to your cursor location. And I can make this a lot larger, right? I could go all the way back to undo for that sphere. 
or I could just do document, new document. No, I don't want to save. Let's go back to Lightbox, grab that Dynamesh Sphere. Let's go ahead and make a tiny little face on this guy, just so we have something. We're going to hold Alt to carve in. There we go. There's my wonderful little face. Let's say I wanted to add another object for ears. On the right-hand side, we have we have Subtool. These are our palettes, so if I click, we've expanded this Subtool palette, and then I can go to Insert. I can insert a brand new object. I'm going to click, uh, let's do a cube. I have added this cube and it looks like I've lost all my work, but this cube in my subtool palette, I can turn on and off so with the eyeball off. I can click this object and it's hidden. And then I can toggle this on and off. I click the little image here. Now I'm on the cube. Now at the top, if I press move, we have what's called our gizmo. So we have W for move, E for scale, R to rotate. You don't really need anything except W because W pulls up open this gizmo and we can move. We can also rotate along this individual axis or this way or this way. And then these little rectangles, we can scale along an individual axis or we can scale uniformly here in the middle. This is our gizmo. So if this were an ear, I could flatten this way. Let's move this into position. Way too big for an ear, so we're going to move that. I'm also going to rotate. This white one is based on my view. You can see I can't see that green ring until I kind of rotate, which is fine. doesn't matter. Now I've got this giant ear that I could start manipulating. So I could use clay buildup on this. I could use the move topological brush. Everything up here are going to be your recent recently used brushes that you've used in this session. Let's make this a little bit more ear shaped. Big old giant ear. Great. There's an awesome ear. But now we have this object. We have the head and we have the ear. What I can do is press Q. Q gets me out of this gizmo and back to drawing. So I can sculpt on this. Let's get my clay build up brush. I can sculpt on this. I can come over here and click this subtool and sculpt on this one. But if I hold Alt, I can just tap to hop back and forth between my subtools. That's going to be very helpful. You go from sculpting here, come over here and sculpt. That's awesome. Now, let's say you've made something awesome and you would like to save it. Please do not go up here to file. We're not going to go to file. We're not going to save as. That's what most people do in almost 99% of all software that they've ever touched. Don't do that. We're actually, it's a better approach to save as tools. So we're in our tool palette. We're going to go to save as. Make sure you know where you're saving. In this example, I'll just throw it in the downloads. Big ear. I've saved it. This will save as a .ztl, and then I hit save. So let's pretend like this is the next time opening ZBrush. We've reloaded ZBrush. We're going to go to load tool. We're going to come down, and in our downloads, we have this little ZBrush image. We have big ear. Hit open, and then what you need to do is left-click and drag somewhere on your canvas here, on your document. Now, this is probably going to end up happening. You're like, oh, shoot, I've got so many of these. What you have to do is press edit. Since I screwed up, this is the only one that's 3D. All of these are 2D representations of this 3D object. This is not going to work. So if this happens, go up to document, new document, hit no, you don't want to save. We've already loaded this tool, so we don't need to load it again. It's right here. But once again, I'm going to left click and drag. It doesn't matter if it's forward, backward, upside down, doesn't matter. I'm going to do mine crooked and then immediately come up here and press edit. Before you do anything else, press edit or press T on your keyboard. You'll notice there's a perspective change and then Everything is back in business with my sculpt.